You know, Lieutenant, you're really a cocky fellow. You're very sure of this, aren't you? I think that there is a very distinct possibility of murder in this case, yes. I think there's a possibility, but I don't think it's distinct. Suppose the murderer in this case was a friend of hers. Suppose the murderer in this case was a man who had access to her house, came and went whenever he wanted to, typed up that letter beforehand when she wasn't around. Promise me you'll think about it. When you come up with the correct answer, you'll let me know. I'm going to take a nap now. Will you excuse me? Suppose it was you. I heard you say something, but I wasn't sure what I you said. I said, suppose it was you. I'm not saying it was you, sir. No, I was just thinking out loud. You know you're an audacious fellow. <laughs> Hello, this is Steve. And hello, everybody. This is Sean. Hello, Steve. Hello, Sean. Welcome to episode five of the Columbo Confab podcast. Uh-huh. Um, first, before we go any further, we have some news. Columbo news. Let me check the really? Columbo news ticker. The, Peter Falk is dead. Well, yeah, that's the latest yeah. Columbo news. There's been nothing else on the on the news ticker since. Okay, never mind. We are not going to have a Columbo news section anymore. No, <laughs> there there is a new there is a new section of our podcast though. Yes. Um, What's that? <clears throat> it's the social media aspect of the podcast, which I promised at the end of last episode I would tell everybody how to contact us on social media. Uh, we have email. We have Twitter. We have Facebook. <clears throat> um, if you look for us on Facebook, just look for the Columbo Confab podcast. Get us on Twitter at Columbo Confab. That's mm-hmm. C O N F A B for those of you that, you know, haven't looked this up on iTunes yet. And also, we have a Gmail account, and it is Columbo Confab at gmail.com. And if you email us, we will probably read your email in the episode and comment on it um and you can say whatever you want and we'll find out truly if colombo people are nuts or not or if it's you know i i really no, well nothing. you know um not, not like those murders she wrote things. oh yeah oh, those can't stand crazy them. fucks yeah them and the matlock people they get together and they're they're hey wait a minute sorry sorry grandpa simpson didn't want to try to step on your shoes hey. there yeah <laughs> Was was that your was that your Grandpa Simpson impersonation? That was a, my my really un, unrehearsed. I didn't know it was going to come out. Grandpa Simpson oh. impersonation. Yes. Oh, I hate my life. No, that's not, is that how he talks? I don't know. That sounds a lot better than what okay. I did. Okay, that's good. So okay, so I do have something that I want to apologize for. Well, maybe not apologize for. I was just wrong about insulting my grandpa. Oh, <sighs> cool. I was just wrong talking about something last episode. Uh, the guy in Star Trek: The Next Generation who played, or 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 as my grandma would call it, Star Trek: The Next Generation, the guy who played uh, Transport Chief O'Brien, O'Brien, yeah, Colm Meany, was not in this episode. Um, it was a different guy, the guy who played the horse trainer. It was a guy named Jerry Gibson, I believe. Uh, so my apologies. I don't know if anybody caught that. And there is something else that you were right about, Steve, and I was wrong. Oh? The two... That's, you should have made this first, but go ahead. Okay, well, the, yeah. the two heavies, the two guys that, like, kidnap Columbo, mm-hmm. and then bring him over to uh, meet with uh, Vincente Vitelli. Vitelli? Right. Yeah. Totally different from the two guys we see later on, because the two guys we see later on are undercover cops. Oh, I don't remember saying that, but I will take your... Uh your apology and uh and accept it well no no problem because you said that and then i'm like no 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 no, no. they were the same guys so okay okay so what are we talking about tonight sean well we are going to talk about the 1972 i think it's 72 uh episode etude in black which is, is spelled etude e-t-u-d-e but it's actually a french word meaning mm-hmm. a short 
musical piece, so it's pronounced etude. I had to look this oh, up. Oh, so it's kind of like interlude. Exactly! Brilliant, oh. sir! Brilliant! Oh, interlude, etude? Yeah. yeah. Um, this is starring John Cassavetes. No, wait. Uh, a little bit of background about this, I gotta tell you. Um, mm. Officially, the first episode that I saw was Le- Lovely But Lethal, which are swing and wheel the 70s picked totally by random i swear but this was the episode that i watched that really got me into colombo and got me you know putting them on like vhs tape. really yeah yeah this was the one that i saw um and for 30 whatever years or 20 whatever years i've been calling it etude in black and it wasn't until earlier this week that i learned it was actually etude in black so which Pretty is good. actually like a new every day. very racist title but whatever it's not really racist, but why is it? Well, uh, hey, Sean, did you know? I bet you didn't know this that Brahms liked to tell dirty stories. <laughs> did you know that Tchaikovsky would hallucinate and he would actually have to hold his. Ugh. Anyway. By chance, I did. <laughs> so, yes, so this episode, um, I thought it was interesting because we we're introduced to Alex Bennett, the. Uh, Benedict. The villain. Benedict, thank yeah. you. The main villain, uh, and of course, he's planning the murder, you find out. And he, st- he starts off, he's playing the piano. He's not very good at it. <laughs> As a matter of fact, there's three people who play the piano in this episode that I'm aware of. Uh, Alex, uh, the, the girl who gets murdered, Jennifer Wells, mm-hmm. and uh, Columbo. <laughs> if you call that playing. <laughs> I don't really think anybody really plays the piano in this except for Peter, Peter Falk. But uh, no, you know what? Oh, I'll, really? bet, I'll bet you John Cassavetes really played the piano. In fact, you—he uh, was actually a very, very talented man. He wasn't just an actor, but he was a filmmaker, and he was also a musician. And um, he was really yeah, he's very good friends with Peter Falk, uh, and they made a couple of movies together where John Cassavetes directed him in a movie called Husbands years and years ago, like 1970. Mm-hmm. And they appeared in the Dick Cavett show completely plastered with Ben Gazzara. And if you all want to see something funny, go on YouTube and search Dick Cavett, John Cassavetes, Peter Falk, and you will see just 15 minutes of the most obnoxious drunkenness I've ever seen on... Um, that was on TV. On that TV. Was on broadcast yes, TV. that was on broadcast TV. And Dick Cavett ha- handles it very, very gentle- gentlemanly. Uh, oh, I texted it to you. I te- you, you, you probably you did. Yeah, yeah, I watched it. Um, there's literally falling down and brawling on the floor and all that. But John Cassavetes, I'm sorry, I was interrupting your synopsis of the story. He was a notorious alcoholic. Like really? I, I think it's I think it's possible that he was probably drunk during much of the filming of this episode. Scary, especially when uh, the scene where he has to knock out uh, Jennifer, yeah, the killer. I I often wonder. I'm sure they, you know, that he's back a couple of feet, but yeah, that would bother me even more. I'm, I'm not saying that he. All there. I'm not saying that he wasn't that he was drunk. I didn't read that. Yeah. I wasn't there, obviously, but you know, he. You they weren't were... even a concept at that point. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> but uh, okay, I'm sorry. I was interrupting your your synopsis. Yeah. Well, no, no, no. So, yeah, we're just introduced to the murderer. Yeah. Uh, uh, we're, we're also, uh, we're eventually introduced to his wife, um, Janice. And she's famous, by the way. You were telling me about, about, about her. And I thought it was an interesting thing, if you would. Oh, sure. Um, so the actress's name is Blythe Danner. It might be Blythe Danner, but I think it's Blythe Danner. And she is the mother of Gwyneth Paltrow. And you, if you watch this very closely, there's only a couple shots. I think uh, maybe the part where she's playing tennis, you can kind of tell oh, that yeah? she's she's pregnant. Maybe just maybe like three months or so. But that so when she was drinking champagne with her mother, right? I hope <laughs> yep. that was <laughs> pregnant, pregnant, pregnant <laughs> with Gwyneth Paltrow, and that accounts for Shakespeare in Love. So Ouch. so yeah. So basically, I, I guess I must be the same age as Gwyneth Paltrow because. I was born a year later after this episode. So she was born in late 1972. Okay. Wow. So we are the same age. Yeah. That's crazy. I thought she was older for some reason. So did I. So did I. Yeah. Huh. Wow. Well, yes. Yeah, so um, Alex, of course, goes to uh, this woman's house. Um, 
I guess to do the deed. We really don't know what what the situation is, but no, no, I'm sorry. Let's rewind it a bit. He has to take his automobile to get it serviced um, by Mike. I guess the mechanic, founder of the band, maybe. Of what band? Mike and the Mechanics. There was oh, a boo. there was a band. Yeah, uh, never mind. It, yes, yes. I know. Wait, qu- qu- can I say something about about that scene? Where yeah. He, okay, so two things. First, there's this line where Benedict... I love how I always call them by their last name, and you're like all personal with these murderers, and you call them by their first name. Uh, Benedict pulls up in his car, and Mike the mechanic says, oh, that'll be his nibs again. Okay, he's Australian or British. Wait, what is that? Okay, Mm -hmm. so the longest time growing up, I thought that nibs was a part in a car. Like, he sees him pulling up, and he's saying, oh, his nibs are broke. But no, his nibs means like is sort of a derogatory way of saying his majesty. Like, oh, we're just going to do whatever his nib says. Interesting. Uh-huh. Okay. Okay, the other... Th- I, yeah, I, I thought they acted like such good friends. I, I didn't think there was anything well, I th- negative against the two. Well, I think that, yeah, he probably didn't like Alex very much because he probably was... Well, he was kind of a douche. Um, yeah. You know, when he eventually shows up uh, to the concert hall and he's... Telling him to re mm-hmm. reposition the cameras and the the microphone, and he's obviously very particular. But it's weird because yeah, he's he's being a douchebag, um, and he's annoying everybody. But he's such a friendly guy. He is. He's <laughs> actually really cool. Um, yeah, and he's he's patting people on the back. You know, he's yeah. kind of ribbing them as he's going. And I mean, yeah, he may be a jerk, but I mean, he seems like a friendly guy. There's another. There's another fact. I'm so sorry, Steve. I, I'm. I'm keep interrupting your, your. There was another thing about the the mechanic scene. I want you to go back and I want you to look at this, um, right. because there's a guy in the mechanic shop that Mike, the mechanic, calls Frank. Frank, wanna hide me that socket wrench, please, or something to like that? Yeah, Frank looked familiar. Was he in? Um, was he a detective or a sergeant in a previous episode? No. He looks he, really familiar to he, me. He hasn't been in any of the episodes that we've done for this podcast, but he yeah. is the most... He's kind of almost in Columbo. He, I don't, I don't know if he was friends with somebody, but he is in the most episodes after Peter Falk, and he always plays, except for... Oh, I know which one you saw him in. Um, now you see him. He played the guy that Columbo goes to see... That new Santini mm-hmm. from a long time ago, yeah. and he lives in that tenement house. Okay, yeah. and his name is Mike Lally. Now, if you go back and you watch that episode, he's sitting at the bar earlier in the episode, and Santini goes up and says, "Ah, oh, Mike Lally." Then later on, they decided to use him, but they gave mm-hmm. him his actual name. Well, he appears in a lot of episodes. His biggest role is in Now You See Him, but usually he just plays a guy in the background. Maybe he has one little line, that type of thing. Oh, okay. So, yeah, I'm sorry. I interrupted your 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 thought process on Alex Benedict. Mm. I wonder if he likes eggs. Did you... Hey, Sean. Hmm. Did you know that Beethoven was a sex maniac? Hmm. <laughs> I did not know that, no. Well, I do now. Yes. I do now. Yeah. yeah. Um, but uh, okay. So yeah, I thought it was interesting about his wife. But um, Alex, yeah. He so his whole thing is he's going to make it appear that he had no way of getting to the crime scene. Uh, his wife was his only source of transportation. But I th- I thought it was really interesting that in order to get from the concert hall to the garage, which we found out later is approximately nine miles or exactly nine miles. I'm sorry, no, nine minutes mm-hmm. away. Um, oh, no, no, that's that's wrong. It's three minutes away because mm-hmm. this is important, people. This this is what kind of catches them. It's three minutes. It's a three minute walk away, but it the the, uh, the crime scene is nine miles away from the garage. I that's, didn't. That's right. I didn't. Okay. Uh, you didn't catch that. Okay, yeah, because Colombo uses that against them at, towards the very end. Um, oh wait, you're absolutely right. Yes, yes, because yeah. his odometer was off by nine miles. Exactly, mm-hmm. exactly nine miles. Mm. Uh, so, so yeah, he needs needs a vehicle to get to the the mer- crime scene. He's still he's dressed in this this uh, uh, raincoat and sunglasses. I don't know. I don't know what the temperature was there, but I th- maybe because we live in Texas, I'm thinking of Texas heat. I would just die. <laughs> running, yes, you know, for three minutes. Um, but uh, 
anyways, yeah. So his his plan is to sneak, get the car out of the garage, which is is the mechanic will have an alibi for the vehicle, uh, and then of course meets up with Jennifer Wells, who we find out is his lover. Mm-hmm. Beautiful lady, by the way. Beautiful eyes. Mm-hmm. Uh, <laughs> I gotta say, there, there's a scene where after the murder, Columbo shows up to the crime scene, and he's talking to a, a sergeant. Mm-hmm. And the whole scene seems uh, unscripted to me. He's talking about how the, the department gave him, you know, single white female from Nova Scotia or whatever, you know, Ken- like Kenosha, that. Wisconsin. Oh, thank you. Yeah. But and then he says, but you look here and she's got, and he's talking about all the history. She's been to Paris. She's been, you know, all over. She's a great piano player, won awards. And it's just once, it just goes back and forth talking about what the department gave him, but what her real life was about. And I thought it was a real touching scene. Did that seem improv to you? Did that seem that was on the cuff? Because the, the sergeant who was acting against him didn't really say anything. He just kind of made facial expressions. Well, I noticed something about that. I agree with you, and I think I have the proof. Um, it's yeah. If you look at the scene, the shots where we've got the older guy, that sergeant guy, who's just mm-hmm. he's just sort of sitting there, kind of scowling, but just kind of like, uh, like you know, he could be doing better things. But then you have the over-the-shoulder shot of him facing Columbo. The guy's laughing. You can see he's smiling, and his head's sort of bobbing up and down. Yeah. So I think it's possible that uh, Peter Falk was improvising, or there was something going on. Maybe I, I don't. I don't know. Well, you think he just wanted to spread his acting chops or something? I don't know. I have no idea. But yeah, I, it totally came off that it wasn't scripted yeah. at all to me. Yeah. Did did the uh, the cockatoo uh, bother you at all? No, no. It was just when they you went. Even when it was screaming bloody when, murder. Oh, oh, the bird. Oh, you were talking about the bird. Okay. Uh, I was. Oh, you were talking, I about, I was talking, I talking about, about something else. Um. <laughs> what else? Did you do? I think I was Can I just say, okay, okay, uh, we used to have a cockatoo when I was a kid, and they really do really? scream like that, yeah. And the cage that she put it in is, mm-hmm. you don't put a bird in a cage like that. Not a bird like that, okay? And well, it, she didn't care about the I, I don't think, no, I don't think so. No, I think the person who did the set design didn't know anything about fucking birds, but, um, yeah. Fascinating. Sean is apparently a... A bird expert. Well, I know a little among bit. Other, among many other things. <laughs> <laughs> um, so he 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 knocks her out while she's playing Chopin with an ashtray, a marble ashtray, right. and he wants to. <laughs> it's, I, you know, you got to poke fun at this sometimes. He wants to make it look like she killed, committed suicide by turning on the. Uh, uh, oh, oh, he blow out the pilot lights well, in her. There you her go. Head. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, which, yeah. And uh, he, he, there, <laughs> there's a bar stool in her kitchen for some reason, right in front of the refrigerator. <laughs> and I don't know why I find this funny. The fact that he sits in the bar stool and then mm-hmm. falls on top of the um, the open oven to see how the body would fall because that's what you do to kill yourself you sit on a bar stool in the kitchen i didn't quite understand what he was trying to do there because if he was trying to set it up as a suicide yeah it just it, it was it was yeah it was very awkward Pe- it was an awkward scene i think people who do that usually just stick their head in the oven because that's the quickest but yeah but he wouldn't be able how would he explain i guess the knock in the back of the head Oh, that's right. Oh, yeah. yeah. So he had to make it look like she. See, I think I, I got it the first time I watched this. I didn't catch the fact of what he was trying to do, but I think in this one is the fact that she would have passed out from the gas, fell forward, and then hit her mm-hmm. head. Because at first I thought, oh, she hit her head and and died from the gas poisoning, but it's the other way around. And then he has a fake suicide letter that he typed. That he brought with him, and he puts it in the um, in her typewriter. Okay, so, and this becomes a, it becomes that becomes a clue later on. So, well, no, no, the big clue is he drops his uh, the flower on his lapel. Oh yeah, that's right. Which he doesn't the, the, he doesn't realize until after the fact. Okay, go ahead. I'm sorry. Yeah, I love the reveal of that, by the way. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, so he drops he drops the feather. Uh, I'm sorry, the feather. He drops the flower. Um, and of course, he doesn't realize this until a little later on in the episode, which is actually one of my favorite scenes yeah. in it. 
but yeah, one of the things that um, that I thought initially when watching this episode, I thought, oh, I bet the bird lives, and that's what the bird's going to react to seeing the killer. I I really thought that's where it, it was going, but unfortunately, the cockatoo uh, bit the big one uh, in this episode too. So. I I thought that if that if 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 that would have happened, I would have been so angry. <laughs> that's how Columbus <laughs> saw, solved it because of the bird. Yeah. Speaking of pets, this is the first episode of Dog. That's right. Or with Dog. That's absolutely right. And uh, I read somewhere, I want to say maybe on Wikipedia, because I wanted to start seeing more episodes with Dog. Mm -hmm. So, you know, that's his trusty companion. Um, I didn't really know much about him. So I wanted to look up what episodes he, he appears in. And that's how I came to watch this particular episode a couple of weeks back before we decided to do a review <laughs> because this is his first episode and I read somewhere that the the writers or no the uh, somebody I guess at NBC said we want Columbo to have uh, a companion another uh, like a rookie police officer that he's training and the, the head writers are like no no that's not going to work Columbo doesn't work with a partner and so they they, they gave in so to speak, by giving him uh, a, a companion or somebody to travel with him, huh? So they gave him dog. That's how. That's that was the <laughs> nemesis. <laughs> so he, w yeah. So there are some really funny uses of dog later on in the series, though. There's two that come off the top of my head that we'll undoubtedly talk about later. But you know, I I don't remember I, in the '90s episodes were there any. Other than murder, a self-portrait. I don't remember him ever coming up in the '90s episodes. I oh, so far from what I've seen, no. Hmm. no. Hmm. I dogged it, and apparently there's two two versions of dog. The uh, the older one passed, I think, after the second season, and then they brought him back. I guess I, 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 other, I, a different a different dog, a I different think he, I, a different actor. You could, dog. yeah, that dog was older than fucking god. It was like. And he even says, you know, his time was up, if you know what I mean. Oh, he wasn't talking about the age of the dog. He was talking about the sad fact that... Yeah. Uh, put him down. yeah. Um, and I, I love the vet. He uh, He's he's getting ready to give him a shot of something with his huge needle. And, I, and one of the things I like about Columbo is he's kind of against violence. Mm -hmm. he, doesn't care, he doesn't carry a weapon. And apparently, he doesn't like shots <laughs> either. Because when the vet told him to hold the shot... He uh, kind of gave the look like when I have to eat Brussels sprouts. You know, I just didn't want, just didn't want anything to do with it. Well, I like the fact that you think at first that he's at the doctor, but then there's right. a sort of a reveal that oh no, he's at the vets. Yeah, someone on the phone says, "Oh yeah, the phone." Someone calls him from the department, and so the vet hands him the phone, and he tells the person on the line, he says, "Oh, I'm at the doctor's." He says, "No, everything's okay. I'm fine." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and that is the most dingiest, grossest veterinary office I've ever. Seen. I think that's the same guy that gave the Joker his 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 plastic surgery in the Tim Burton Batman movie. Wow. Look at you! See what I have to work with here. That's it was so well. It wasn't that bad, but yeah. And that actor who played the vet looked really familiar to me, and I I looked him yeah. up, and he's been in like everything on tv i mean like freaking every 70s and 80s shows you can imagine mostly playing rabbis which yeah, makes a lot of sense he looks like he could play a good rabbi hey sean mm. did you know that danny elfman likes to meet men in truck stop bathrooms wait what is this what, what are we talking about uh, danny elfman the composer okay. the movie composer <laughs> likes to meet men in truck stop bathrooms i didn't know if you knew that okay all right <clears throat> <laughs> you said Batman. So. Oh, okay, okay. Oh, very good. Okay. Oh. Um, where were we? Oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah. <laughs> so uh, Jennifer Wells doesn't show up for the big concert, and somehow he manages to cancel her out. And this is yeah. your favorite part, Steve, that you just mentioned. Oh, right. So yeah, so he's being filmed. He's being recorded for like PBS or something like that. Mm -hmm. And. And I thought this would be a big clue for Columbo, but actually they never used it. But he, so he's conducting, and he's really getting into it. You know, he's just frilling his arms around and sweating, and he happens to look down at his lapel, and the in the 
and the camera kind of freezes on him, noticing he doesn't have his little coronation. Mm-hmm. And he realizes, oh shit, <laughs> where's my, where's my? And I wonder if at that moment he realizes it's at the crime scene, or does he re- think, oh, I just happened to drop it? I think he he knows. Well, he was at a million different places after the crime scene, so it's possible it could have dropped off like in his dressing room. Mm-hmm. But I obviously he goes back to the crime scene to see if it did indeed drop off there. Yeah. Um, so yeah, he he does see it on by the piano mm-hmm. bench. Is that what it's called? Stool? Yeah, piano bench. And uh, so he sees it there, and he pretends to drop his jacket so he can retrieve it without being too obvious. And at the moment he picks it up, that Columbo turns around and says, Did you find something? Okay, now, okay, pause, because I got a question here about this. Yeah. Okay. I could not figure out the moment when Columbo knew it was him. I I think this was the lead situation. The, I think I think this is what gave him like I, this guy's a is going to be a suspect. Okay, because I don't I don't think he confirms it until later, but I think this is when he goes onto Columbo's radar. Because the third time that he meets him, okay, he meets him at the crime scene, then he goes to his house the next day to get his autograph. No, right. no, dis- what a pointless scene! Yeah, yes, yeah. yes. <laughs> he's like he's like he starts fumbling with his words. He's like, well, I was in the area. He goes, no, that's not true. I really actually wanted to come by and ask you a question. He never asked that question. Well, the only, well, the only thing he asks asks uh, Alex about is his house. Yeah. And do, how much do you pay in taxes? No, he actually asks him, uh, how much do you make? And Cassavetes goes, that's very impertinent. How much do I make? That's right. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, I would answer the same way. Oh, oh, you know, before we continue on, uh, before this scene, I think we need to recognize that a very famous house is in this episode. The, uh, the mansion from uh, Fresh P- Prince of Bel-Air. It's the same mansion. Are you serious? Al- really? Yeah, that's the same house. Yeah. Really? Wow. Yeah. Okay. Okay. That's really funny. Okay. All right. Interesting. And instead of, instead of Jeffries, we have um, uh, <laughs> Pat Morena as the butler. And by the way, I got to say, even though he's a very, I mean, very minor character, he only shows up for this one scene. He is, he's... He's he owns that scene. He does, yeah. <laughs> I mean, he's hilarious. He thinks he thinks Columbo's a musician, you know. And it's b- bizarre to me because when he opens the door, okay, so yeah, Columbo goes visits Alex to ask him questions, which really doesn't lead to any real questions. But uh, yeah, so uh, so so Pat Morita opens the door as a butler, and he thinks he's a musician. And Columbo says, "No, no, no, I- I'm a cop." And he goes, "Eh." He goes, I'm a police officer, so he pulls out his badge. And he looks at the badge. Pat looks at the badge. <laughs> Pat. Like, he's never seen a police officer. Ba- I'm sure <laughs> wherever he's from, China, wherever, there's got to be police officers. But yeah. But he plays it like a total moron. Like, he's, well, I don't know what that is. What are you showing me, this silver thing in your leather pocket thing there right <laughs> and 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 he goes running up the stairs la, 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 la. yeah he's and, like mumbling and, to himself and what, what's so awesome is that Cassavetes, and i think this was improvised plays all right relax relax you know pats him on the back as he's walking the other way down the stairs as he goes up <laughs> it's yeah it, it, you know what's cool though even though that scene is completely pointless it has still got some great chemistry i i can't think of a better word between peter falk and john Cassavetes, because they they talk about nothing. There there no. is no point to that conversation whatsoever. None at all. But I sat I mean, there. Maybe he's trying to establish just why maybe maybe money might be a yeah yeah yeah. yeah I well, guess. Let me ask you this. I'm kind of curious because there's a lot of a lot of episodes that I've noticed where Columbo. I don't know if the character legitimately is a fan of these people, uh, which. You know, he always will ask for their autograph. And matter of fact, it's a it's it was a skit on like Frank Sinatra's roast. Uh, you can watch on YouTube, by the way, where he asks for an autograph for his wife. Is that a common thing? And if so, why does he do that? Do you do you think? Kind of throw them off their their game, or I don't know. I think it's possible that he genuinely m- might be fans of these people. Um, th- in fact, wait, I wanted to go back to the scene where he first meets Benedict. Um, he goes, oh, I want to, I want to congratulate you. You, you've given my wife and I a great, my, me and my wife a great deal of pleasure. And 
Benedict says this thing that actually comes... He doesn't say it douchey, but just the statement itself is douchey. He goes, he says, Oh, I didn't realize that you were a fan of piano concertos. Why would that be douchey? Because he's like, well, you don't look like you're a sophisticated person like me. And Columbo says, no, 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 no. I was talking about the Strasbourg waltzes, which is... You know, he said, I forgot about those. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, I don't know. It just came across as a dick thing to say. But Yeah. Uh, yeah, I want to... We should talk a little bit more about Alex Benedict because... Um, at, oh, he's fascinating. At, yeah, at no point does he come across until like Columbo sees him for like the fifth or sixth time, and of course shows up at every possible. You know, he's actually quite polite to him, uh, Alex to Columbo, even though he's really tired of having him around. Yeah, um, he never. Oh, and Columbo is full on. Yeah, uh, I mean, I've, I've seen enough to pick up when Columbo's trying to be annoying, but I mean, it's unadulterated annoyance here. I mean, he's he, just... yeah, he is real. And at, I, at one point. I remember Benedict turns to him, he goes, my friend, enough is enough, you know, um, but what was my point here? Oh, yeah, Alex Benedict. He kills Jennifer Wells because they're having an affair and she's going to reveal their um, their affair to his wife. If, if he does, no, he, no the, the ultimatum was you divorce your wife. And I guess we hook up, right? Or or she's going to tell, which is a really uh, for someone who's committing adultery. That's I'm surprised surprised you didn't ex, you know expect Alex to kill her to be quite yeah. Honest and and he she would expose him to his wife and more importantly his wife's mother, who then would just she would see to it that his career was ruined because she's wait. Speaking of the mother, I recognize that voice and that face, oh, but yeah. I cannot place... Who is that? Uh, that's Myrna Loy. Um, have you ever watched a movie called The Thin Man? No. Uh, it's okay, neither have I. I. I intend to watch it sometime. <laughs> it's a mystery. Uh, 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 Nick, right. Nick and Nora Charleston. Uh, but I agree. The the voice is familiar. It's, it's like maybe she was in some voiceovers and cartoons or something. Um, uh, I don't know. Yeah, I'm, I'm just looking up but, her IMDb. Well, she was in... Uh, Airport, 1975. Um, I'm looking for something I would recognize. That's it's crazy because I, I she has done a lot, but I haven't seen any of these films. Hmm. But I know her. I've seen her in something else. But I'm sorry, I didn't mean to bother you. I wanted to bring <laughs> it up because I, I couldn't place her. Okay, it's okay, Lieutenant. <laughs> <laughs> I don't remember. Anyway, okay, so. She's the motive for the crime because if his mother-in-law finds out that he's screwing this girl, she'll ruin his career. Okay, so immediately you think, okay, he's a fucking jerk, he hates his wife, la la la. No, it just turns out that Alex Benedict thinks with his ding a ling a little too often and really does love his wife. I really by the end this was over by the time this was over, I really believed that Alex Benedict loved his wife. And, yeah, you well, you do get that in the yeah, final scene. It definitely he in the final says, scene, yeah. and and she's a little bit paranoid. She does think he may be playing around, and she says to him in the final scene, "I'll stand for anything is okay, anything except for murder." And I think that yeah. she knew that he was screwing around on her, but she just sort of tolerated it because she knew that he loved her, um, which which makes him a really interesting character. And again, going back to the fact that he's never uh, like a fucking real dick to Columbo. Columbo annoys the hell out of him. He never yells at him. He's actually sort of entertained. And the two of them have a really good repertoire, a really good cat and mouse going every time they have a conversation. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, that's all I have to say about Alex Benedict. Hey, Sean. What? Did you know that Mozart was a heroin fiend? Really? Wow. I did not know that. Yeah. Jeez. Okay, pressing on. (laughs) Um, (laughs) Okay, so... Oh, hey, another famous actor in this. I know we're kind of skipping ahead a few scenes, but Punky Brewster's dad is in this episode. What? Where? Who? You know, well, you know the uh, the father who played Punky, or the actor who played Punky Brewster's father? I never watched Punky Brewster. Okay, the guy who was in Police Academy, the... Uh, oh, the, 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 the head guy, the captain or whatever? Yeah, yeah. Uh, his name was... What was his name? What does he play in this? He, he, he meets the mother, 
and the daughter in a restaurant, and she gives him a check, it, you know, um, uh, so in order to kind of keep the press quiet. Oh, yes, 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 yes. It was like he was either a lo- their lawyer or a member of the board or something. Yeah, he was a member of the board, and I think he was maybe a... Uh, um, like a writer or something like that. Huh. His, his name was Edward. That's what it was. Huh. Edward. In, yeah. Okay. So you didn't recognize him at all. Uh, no, no. It was the same actor who played Punky Brewster's. I don't. I'm surprised you never watched that, considering you like '80s stuff. Uh, but yeah, he played the father of that of that character in that program. You know what? You said that. And you know what? I immediately thought of. I thought of the guy that played the dad in Webster, which oh, is a no. totally different guy. Mm-hmm. Did you ever watch Webster? Yeah, he did that show. The mom, the mom, yeah, yeah, the, the mom is a murderer. Emmanuel Lewis is a little stupid laugh. I hate it. As a child, I hated it. I didn't. I watch. probably still hate it. The the mom in that show is a Columbo murderer. Ma'am. She is. Yeah, yeah. Ooh, I may have to. Yeah, watch that one later because she looks evil. And I think she was an ass on like on set on uh, Webster. Oh, really? If I read. I read that somewhere. Hmm. Well, you know, Peter Falk wasn't exactly Mr. Nice Guy throughout most of <laughs> Columbo either. Uh, oh, he wasn't. He, yeah, he threatened to quit unless they let him direct an episode. Uh, Fascinating. Which which episode? Uh, was it good? It wasn't bad. It it was called Blueprint for Murder. Hmm. Uh, I may have seen that one. Really? About that the the familiar. architect. It, it's it's in the fir- the end of the first season with Patrick O'Neill. Well, anyway, yeah. It's not really one of my favorites. Watch it come up right away, but anyway. Oh, something I thought was kind of a funny jab at at the uh, the show. Uh, the vet is talking about why he was watching the concert on TV mm. in, in his office. It was because his wife wouldn't allow him to because she only likes murder mysteries. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So... So I okay. So the third time Columbo meets Alex Benedict is at the uh, the, the the garage. Mm-hmm. He just shows up out of nowhere, and at that point we realize he knows that he's the murderer. Otherwise, he wouldn't have shown up. And he's talking about you know whether or not she really committed suicide. Why would she type a suicide letter? And he's Benedict is coming up with every damn excuse in the book for why she did this and why she did that. Yeah, and his explanation I thought really gave it away. And it, yeah. At the end, well, okay, it's funny because the scene where the house, Columbus talking about, what a great house, you know, it would take me 90 years uh, to work in order to afford something, and that wouldn't even be without food. And then he meets him at the garage, and he's, what's scary to me is that the mechanic let Columbus go into the driver's seat of the vehicle of this expensive <laughs> foreign car. But Columbus sitting in there, <laughs> revving the engine... <laughs> Alex walks up. And he's like, "What are you doing?" He goes, "I love this car. I wish I had a car like this." Does Columbo always compare himself like to these rich people? I mean, it's it, that seems to be another theme I've noticed. It's true. It, it, no, when you think about it, because in the next scene, he, he he comes across him. He's at the Hollywood Bowl on stage playing with a piano. Yeah, my parents could never afford a piano. Yeah, this is a dream. <laughs> Did he wear a barrel as a kid? <laughs> Suspenders. Well, Columbo came from very, very meek. Uh, oh yeah, beginnings. I mean that that's evident. He, he does he does bring up that a little bit here and there. Um, <laughs> and, but there's a, at the end of that scene after Benedict leaves, Columbo <laughs> tells the mechanic to come take a look at his car. Well, I only work on foreign cars. Oh no, it's okay. It's a French car, and he brings him over to this hunk of junk. And the, the the mechanic won't work on his car because there are limits, man. You know. <laughs> yeah. <there's> a... <laughs> hey, Sean. Huh. Did you know John Williams has a foot fetish? Really? Wow. Mm. Yeah. Mm. <clears throat> okay. All right. Um. <laughs> what's next? Oh, yes. The clue about the typewriter, uh, which is a good clue. It is. But if you are Alex Benedict, do you make the note beforehand? Bring it with you? Okay, he obviously made it on her typewriter while he was Yeah, at- I would have. Yeah, he had plenty. Maybe because he was pressed for time. Is that what you're thinking? Why He should have waited until he was there and had full access to the house. Exactly. 
But see, I think he was pressed for time too. So he, what he would have to do is commit to murder, rush, drive back, back that vehicle. I don't know how he backed it. I couldn't have backed that vehicle back into that garage with that, how tight things were. You know, get it back up on the press, climb out the window. <laughs> you know, and basically go backwards. I I don't know. I think he was pressed for time. I don't. He, how, had, but, he had a concert. To, but how to long? Do. How long does it take to type two or three lines on a piece of paper? And if he typed it beforehand and he's got to carry it around with him, there's a chance it could bend or get com- contaminated or something. Good point. Good point. So yeah. it would be safer to do it. Mm, just saying. I don't know. I don't know. Um. What else? But again, a great scene between the two of them while they're on uh, on, he, on sta- talking on the stage. There's another, uh, while a minor character, I think an important character we, we keep overlooking, oh, yeah. is Audrey. Audrey. Oh, God. The young girl. The young smartass that... Uh, God. God help me. <laughs> <laughs> she calls Columbo out at every opportunity. And I think, uh, it seems like a lot of Columbos, they have young girls... That are that they're, that's their point is they they call Columbo out mm-hmm. and not on top of, uh, I'm sorry on top of that there's always a little sexual window with these young girls <laughs> it's very weird what, what Sean I, I, is it a different time is it just well I mean this is from the early 70s and we're looking at it now and it's well, just well she, he says to her he says Audrey uh, you know I like you because he wants her to work with him mm-hmm. and she says oh do you like me for my mind or my body. Like she's and he, like, and he goes, she, and he says, sure, no, just kidding. <laughs> no, 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 no. He says, oh no, no, Audrey, look, would you give me a break? And because she, she mentions to him earlier on that she was always over there at Jennifer Wells's place talking about men. Oh God, which I can't and, and picture. And that. Jennifer Wells, like we know from the very first scene with her, almost the first line is, she likes to be free, <laughs> whatever that means. I just picture her with this little girl in her "quote unquote" apartment, which is that what that's what they call it at one point—an apartment. Sitting there with her bourbon, you know. Oh, Audrey, let me let me let me tell you about men. Don't trust him, Audrey. I think she deserved to die. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm <laughs> wow. sorry. She was no, like, <laughs> I liked, I liked Jennifer, and she was attractive. I mean, you know, uh, Columbo does lament about. She's got a gorgeous body. Look at these eyes. There's one thing missing. One thing. A man. <laughs> She's got bedroom That's eyes. a really good Columbo, by the way. Yeah, that's not a, bad. That's not bad. It's a little Marge Simpson. It's a little Marge Simpson. Homie. <laughs> um, but, uh, no, she's like Fatal Attraction. She's like Glenn Close in Fatal Attraction. Oh, yeah. Break I up. Mean, like, she was asked. I mean, that sounds horrible. No one asks to die. But, really, I mean, I would have... Either change my after making that de- declaration that either you you announce everything and you marry me or I'm going to tell everybody that's those that's two extremes. She should change the locks on her door. Yeah, I mean that's uh, I I'm surprised. And then she um, as she's playing, he you know Alex sneaks up behind her and gives her kind of a neck rub. But you know that was a fake choke right there. Yeah, he was he was seeing how how aware she was. Yeah, that was scary. Yeah, huh? Um, what happens next? Um, well, there's actually. So, anyways, so Audrey calls out. I want to say Audrey calls out Columbo for leaving his his dog in in his little jalopy with the windows up. <laughs> Shame on Columbo! Indeed. Well, wait a minute. He didn't have the windows up because he could hear the dog barking from inside the window. No, no. She even says you need at least crack it a bit oh, for the no. dog. Oh, that's true. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Um, well, she didn't fly in today's wor- today's world. That's for sure. Now Audrey has a connection with um, the the rest of the uh, the rest of the the, the, the plot because she um, she uh, Columbo thinks that she's going to point out who the murderer is. Yeah, yeah. And you really do think, yeah. She does know of a man dressed in a tuxedo that often goes to visit Jennifer, and it turns out to be the groovy dooby trumpet player. Um, Chris was his name. I can't remember. I I, I want to say it was David, but I don't know. But that whole subplot took way too long, and I really felt that kind of bogged down. Yeah, uh, the episode, like the whole scene where Columbo goes and visits uh, the jazzy Ubi Dooby guy. Yeah, um, yeah. And he, um, in that whole conversation, 
Yeah, I I know it eventually. They're trying to make a point that he they want him that he reveals that he, that she is seeing a lover, but I don't know that it was like maybe five minutes that could have been cut out. I I just didn't didn't enjoy seeing that scene again because in initially when I watched it, I thought it was going to be something really important. As a matter of fact, at the beginning of the episode when they do little clips. Mm-hmm. Of the kind of like a highlight reel of what you're about to watch, it seems like it's more important in the highlight reel at the time. But when we actually see it, it just it's kind of a lame duck of a scene. Yeah, for me. it is, and yeah, those are those are red herrings. Don't I know it's impossible to not look at them, but uh-huh. uh, yeah, I I agree. It, it was, uh, but there is a couple good lines from it uh, where he tells Myrna Loy, he goes, you know, yeah, I smoke a little grass. And that's uh, so seventies. Just call it grass. Just like you, you maybe uh, used to take a drink of booze in po- prohibition. And her, her crack back at him. If you're trying to win me up, then talking about my age, you're not getting there, Sonny, or something like that. Another another scene that just could have been taken out completely. It that was not needed. I guess it establishes a motive because after yeah. that she tells Columbo, "Oh, anybody, I can boot anybody out of the foundation, especially Alex Benedict, her son-in-law." And because at that point we see him looking at the wall, and he's like pausing, and you know he's like he's onto something. But mm-hmm. um, so fun fact about this: um, this was actually written by uh, Stephen Bochco, who of okay. course is known for Hill Street Blues and you know a handful oh, of other okay. things. Yeah, he was uh, I believe he was a script editor for Columbo, um, huh. and his script was short, like all of the other Columbos that came before this. Because normally when they aired on TV with commercials, it would be an hour and a half. Okay. This episode is the first one that was with commercials two hours. So it's about an hour and a half long story. Well, somebody, I don't know who, picked up the script and decided that they were going to make it longer, probably to sell more airtime oh, for commercials. I see. And yeah. that's why you've got all this extra padding. Um, and some of it I mind, some of it I don't mind. I don't mind the stuff in the house where he's talking about his income, but the boyfriend stuff I think bogs it down. Like, uh, yeah, I I didn't mind the scenes. I yeah, I felt like the scenes with Audrey were uh, not necessary, but I didn't mind them. I thought they were kind of funny. Um, yeah, the, the 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 scenes where he's talking about the house, I thought that was interesting. I thought that was just character development. But yeah, the. The whole thing with the jazz, the jazz player, I just could care less. I mean, maybe they were just trying to show a correlation between the two. No, nah, it didn't. Um, it it didn't work. It didn't work at all. Oh, but, hey, Sean. Yes. Did you know? Did you know George George Gershwin had a very specific fetish for Asian women with webbed fingers? <laughs> well, as I was saying, the wrap up clue. Uh-huh. <laughs> every I didn't t- know if you knew that. I didn't know if you knew that. I, I thought. You know. Well, every time you, you're going to say one, you you don't have it memorized. You have it on your notes. I can hear it because every time you can say it, I can hear. I can oh, hear. I've been planning this. I've been planning this. I'm sorry. <laughs> because that's my favorite part was when uh, Alex would at the very beginning he had all these kind of weird sexual. Um, uh, things about all these famous uh, composers. I, I thought that was interesting. Uh, so I'm, I'm giving you. I know. I know I'm I providing know. you some details of sexual sexual deviations of famous composers. Okay. Like Danny Elfman. Some some I, some 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 may be true. Some probably aren't. Okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, <laughs> uh, I, I can't remember where I was. You just totally. <laughs> um. Oh. Oh. Uh, okay. So. Um, <laughs> so yeah. Oh, I, I like the scene where I, it's about three fourths of the way into the episode, and I, I think Columbo knows Alex is the killer, mm-hmm. and he's 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 basically he's basically called out and says, I I think what I think the the murder the the person who was murdered knew the killer, and he's starting to lay it out, and he says, and I think. And he's like playing it all out, like you know, this is hypothetical, blah blah blah. But he goes, "I think you are the murderer," and Alex is kind of taken aback, and and he says, 
and as as they exchange words, uh, Columbo he starts to leave, and he turns around. And he goes, "Oh, just to let you know, uh, I've convinced my superiors that this isn't a suicide, and this is a murderer. Uh, this is a murder, and to let you know, my speciality is homicide." Mm-hmm. And he walks off. Just to let you know <laughs> that I know that it's you. Yeah, basically, and and the look on uh, Alex's face. It's just pure horror. I thought. Oh fuck! You know, he's he's he, he knows. Columbo suspects him. He's a prime suspect, and he's on the case. Yep. But I love that he says, "My speciality is homicide." It's an excellent line. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. I think I think if memory serves, uh, back in the day when I was watching these on Channel sixty six in Chicago, they used that line in the commercials. Oh yeah, yeah. It's a good line. Yeah, you know, and it when I, when I watch it, it's kind of like, Ooh, you're in trouble, buddy. You're gonna get it. But the part where he said where he says that, where he says, "Well, suppose it was you," he doesn't say, "I think it's you." He says, "Well, suppose it was you. How would oh, you I'm do sorry, it?" I misquoted. Yeah. No, it's all no worries. And <laughs> Benedict is he is like his like oh fuck. What is he trying to say? I don't understand. Does he think it's me? Does he know that it's right. me? And then by yeah, the end... They're trying to see what, what's Columbo's uh, angle here. Yeah, yeah, and then by the end of that, after Columbo walks off, he realizes, fuck, he does know it's me. And then from then on, he becomes a little bit more aggravated or tense yeah, yeah, with think Columbo. At, at that, at, from that point on, he's not. he doesn't want to deal with Columbo. And he's, he's very... Yeah. Because before that... You know he's giving him all the feeding him all this bullshit like at the at the at the garage saying, you know artists they just get so pent up with stress and emotion that sometimes they just break and they commit suicide or something like that and it's mm-hmm. such bullshit and of course Columbo knows it's bullshit but Benedict doesn't know that Columbo knows it's bullshit yeah even though and, it, it, and I always find it interesting Columbo goes after if there's a woman. That the murderer is associated with, in this case, the wife. He goes after the wife, and he, and he almost sabotages or he sets up the conversation for the wife and the husband. Oh God, yeah. To have that conversation, he goes to her and goes, "Hey, I, I don't know if you are aware, but uh, the case has been uh, considered a murder. We think it's a lover." He's giving everything to the wife to kind of connect the dots and to have that conversation with her husband Alex and kind of it kind of agitating that relationship he's hoping he's I think Columbo's hoping that agitation will surface a new clue Mm -hmm. absolutely yeah I just realized something when he goes to talk to her while she's playing tennis he points out the carnations and later on when he's going to see the vet again and he finds out that the concert was taped he's like I had no idea it was taped like why didn't somebody tell me it was taped makes me think that he saw Benedict pick up the carnation at the crime scene and that's what gave it yeah yeah and and didn't he say oh I dropped my coat or something that effect he's like you didn't yeah. drop your coat you dropped the flower why okay now it all makes sense so he knew about the carnation that's well, why it was hmm. hmm I was a little concerned about though so it was a, a per, uh, so when he went back to the vet for dog uh, to get his booster shot or whatever um. The uh, the vet says, "Oh, it's pre-recorded. Yeah, this is what we saw last time you were here because it's pre-recorded. Very, very coincidental." But I thought that was very unrealistic because if that <laughs> was on PBS, there would have been a a, um, a pledge drive like right in the middle <laughs> of it. And, <laughs> it's true. <laughs> if the concert lasted 40 minutes there would have been 30 minutes of pledge drive so. <laughs> hey, would you like a Alex Benedict co- tote bag then you can pledge $150 or, or how about a Tom Baker mug <laughs> yeah Doctor Who reference ladies and gentlemen I don't know what that is oh, Okay. Um, <clears throat> so where are we okay so the, the scene I think we're leading to the scene where uh, Columbo makes his case. He, he uh, Alex is composing. Uh, the wife is sitting behind him in a chair, and Columbo kind of you know he's making his way up to the stage, and he sits behind her. And um, again, 
we see a situation where Alex speaks speaks a phrase in Italian. Mm-hmm. They say Latin, but it's Italian. And Columbo doesn't know what he says. I just find that hard to believe. He knows Italian. I don't know if he the character honestly doesn't know Italian or if he um, is just faking it to kind of well, make his presence well, that's known. Well, that's interesting because he has no reason to fake it at that moment. Because mm-hmm. why would he do that? Why would he ask her? So that's definitely an Italian? Huh. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's Latin. I mean, it's pretty much the same thing. Uh, it's the same words. But uh, Alex would have spoken it in Italian because no one speaks Latin. It means like a fantasy. And he's like, right. he smiles. But he's genuinely enjoying this concert or this this man that, you know, put con- you know that's not technically a concert, but he's enjoying the music uh, that's being conducted by this man whose life he's about to ruin. Yeah. Well, and Gwyneth Paltrow's mother, you know, she turns and she's not too happy to see them. But the scene where Alex, he's composing... And he happens to glance over his left shoulder and sees Columbo sitting there smiling. Yeah. He just like, okay, that's it. That's enough. <laughs> that's it for the day. Go home. And Columbo has and to say... Ruined, it ruined his day. Well, I mean, it I does. I swear, I promise, if you'll just give me ten minutes of your time, this will be the last time you see me. And he was right. Well, he's going to have to appear in court, right? To... Well, that's true. You're absolutely right. Yeah, that's <laughs> so, true. But yeah, I, but I like that. It's almost like, Ale- you know, Alex never agrees to that. Only only Gwyneth Paltrow's mother agrees to that. Wait, agrees to what? To, to give him 10 minutes or, you know, and she's like, yes, let's, let's get this behind us. I don't want to hear any more of it. Let's go. Let's go see what he wants. And, and then he promised he won't bother us ever again. But Gwyneth Paltrow's mom isn't in that scene. You're talking about, yeah. we're talking about the last scene. Yeah. No, she's not in that scene. Yeah, she is. You mean at the reveal, when he reveals him as a murderer? Yeah, yeah. No, she's not. Yeah, she is. I swear to God, she's not. I'm telling you, she is. Whatever. Anyways. It's so. just it's just Columbo, Gwyneth Paltrow. Not Gwyneth Paltrow. Are we, we've been calling her Gwyneth Paltrow for five minutes. No, Gwyneth Paltrow's mother. Oh, Jesus Christ. No. Okay, okay. It's, it's, it's my, that's my problem. Yeah. I've been thinking of her as Gwyneth Paltrow, and Gwyneth Paltrow's mother is Myrna Loy. Never mind. Never mind. <laughs> Sorry. So, so. My fault. My fault. Bl- bless So, Dan. I love it. And, you know, if Alex was smart, he would have ran, run in the opposite direction. As soon as they walked into the studio, and he saw all those cops there, that's that's bad news. Yeah. That, that means Columbo's got you. He, you know, he's, you know exactly... That's exactly what's going to put you away. Oh, we forgot to mention the scene where um, Columbo brings Audrey uh, to the... Um, I don't know what you call it uh, in this situation, where they're composing uh, music for a documentary. When You know, when Audrey has to point out and is pointing out mm-hmm. the other guy. Mm-hmm. The wrong guy that Columbo doesn't want her to point out. Mm-hmm. But he's doing a documentary on Nazis. Mm-hmm. With I mean, this guy's evil. I mean, that's... <laughs> <laughs> well, the music... Is that a sign? Yeah, I don't know. The music was terrible, though. I don't know how that it matched was. up with the... Uh, uh, I Plus, apparently, after he was done with that, he was going to go to his job at Foot Locker, because that's what he was wearing. Did you notice that? Uh, uh, yeah, Benedict it was, was very... wearing... It, was, it looked like a ref's costume. So, yeah, Foot Locker, anybody? No? Okay. <laughs> No memories. Well, of... you know, you know, he's got to pay for the furniture in that big, expensive house somewhere. Oh, this is true. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is, it's seven hundred and fifty thousand dollar house. <laughs> Were you shocked to hear that yeah. Colombo made eleven thousand dollars a year? I know. <laughs> <laughs> now I realize this is nineteen seventy two, but that's really low. I mean, and he and if, if he's been so successful at solving murders, well, I know this is only season two, but. I mean, really, Levin? He, well, okay, If assuming he's not lying. There is a website, and you know what? I should have done my research. I should have looked it up. Where you can type in a year and then a dollar amount and then convert it to another year in those dollars. So I should have seen what $11,000 is in, in 2017. I'll bet you, I'll bet you it's about... 40? I would say 60. I think it's 60? Because that house has got to be $3 million. Oh wait, then you're right. It would be closer to forty. No. Well, because I, the house. What did you say? The house was seven, 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 seven hundred. Seven fifty. Seven fifty. 
Yeah. Huh. Yeah. And then uh, obviously, uh, un- well, who's the uncle from Fresh Br- Prince? Uh, uncle. Oh, don't leave me hanging. Who's I don't. I don't know. I've never. Miller? I've never watched that show. I'm sorry. But obviously, he they bought that family. Okay. That that family bought that house after this. Episode. You know that's interesting because um, the episode immediately after this called the Greenhouse Jungle. That was I, a good one too. You you watched that? Yeah. Did you realize that that house is from Benson? No, I I didn't. I, maybe I'm, it might be another house, another episode. But remember, that's ben, what I love about these old yeah. TV shows. You get to see a lot of. Um, TV sets and uh, houses that are reused. Yeah, yeah. I love that. And not it, even... It makes it, it's romantic to me, I guess. The, the first Columbo, the pilot episode with uh, Prescription Murder, the house that the model lives in with a swimming pool, mm-hmm. I could... Sw- okay, that house has been in many, many movies. And I think that one mm-hmm. of them is Galaxy Quest. Have you ever seen no. Galaxy Quest? Yes, it's been a while. But... It's it's Tim Allen's house in Galaxy Quest, and I uh, it's got that house has a name, and I but um, well let me say this: so the very first episode, the TV movie, uh, the apartment uh, where you know the he breaks the glass and the sliding glass, um, and where the piano is, mm-hmm. that set is reused, and I can't remember. I saw it again a couple episodes later. Oh, I wish I would have taken notes on that, but that that set is reused. That that kind of that where the bar is on the left, mm, and, you, mm. and you've got it's it's the one where it's the one where the uh, the wife. Oh shoot! Well, it's not worth talking about this episode, but yeah, they do reuse that set a lot too. God, you've been watching a lot of these on your free time. I love Columbo. Of course <laughs> I am. Um. Okay, so I okay, so the end of this is excellent. This is probably one of the best clues at the end of Columbo ever. Mm-hmm. Um, what he says, he where he says to his wife, he's like, uh, "Yeah, you gave the flower to me," and then he just bends down to her and he says, um, "You know I'm guilty. You know I did it, but I just want to let you know that I love you and I've always loved you and I'll continue." I, yeah, I had a hard time hearing him whisper. Um, really? On my set. Yeah, so that's what he was saying? Yeah, and uh, then he just says, he goes up to Columbo and he goes, you're a great detective. Shakes you're his hand. Genius. Yep. Yeah. And uh, goodbye. And then almost as a as a part, almost so respectful in a way, after he walks out, Columbo says goodbye to the wife, and then he says to the guy, play the concert again, I want to watch it again. As if to say, like, I don't like the fact that you killed someone, but I really enjoy it watching you conduct this orchestra yeah I really and i like the scene where uh <laughs> i know it's it's kind of a somber uh moment but the scene where they they you know columba walks uh alex and his wife uh you know Gwyneth paltrow's mother into um into that screening room and he goes frank turn out the lights and so oh he yeah goes, he goes and he goes frank turn on the lights and he goes, Frank, turn off the lights. And he's looking at the <laughs> he goes, and he says, Frank, turn on the lights. And he tells the cop, Can you can you turn this off for me? I don't know how this works. <laughs> Frank, turn off the lights. <laughs> I know, it's like this totally tense moment. Like, I've got this all set up. I know exactly what I'm turn on the lights. Turn off the lights. Turn on the lights. <laughs> You're right, yeah. I didn't even remember that. Uh, uh from seeing it before. Poor yeah. Frank. He's probably oh Jesus. <laughs> That's why in the last episode we we reviewed when the when that uh, that one uh, detective was getting annoyed with with Columbo. I'm thinking he's probably because he's been with it with Columbo on moments like that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Oh, all right. So, are we uh, are we going to rate this uh, beautiful thing? Well, well, hold on. Oh, I'm oh. sorry. I'm sorry. You yeah. obviously really like this. I can tell. <laughs> Did you know uh, Steve uh, Jablonski, the guy who composes the Transformer uh, um, scores? I don't know if you know who that is, but that, he does the Transformer movies. Mm-hmm. Did you know he was into necrophilia? Really? Oh, wow. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Hmm. 
Okay, ladies and gentlemen, we're back with the Colombo Confab podcast. Right. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> here, let me try. Well, these one. Music- these yeah, composers and musicians, man, they just really weird people. Yeah, uh, you know, uh, I don't know if you knew this, Steve, but Johann Sebastian Strauss, yes, had a humongous VHS porn collection. I did know that. Yeah, yes. you did. Oh, yeah. you did know that. Okay, I'm sorry. Yeah, I'm a big follower. Yes. Oh gosh. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you, I just realized I, got, I I was wrong about something. It's Johann Sebastian Bach. He was the one with the big VHS porn. Oh, collection. Bach. Not oh, Johann yeah, yeah. Sebastian yeah, the other guy Strauss. Had, had had Betamax. Oh, <laughs> yeah. You're yeah. Right. Uh, sorry. My mistake. Oh, you I totally sorry. threw a curveball at me there. I don't want to get time. facts wrong. Not in this podcast. We're the we're the we we get facts right. Yes. Okay. So are you ready to review this? Yeah. Um, okay. I I'm gonna give you uh, a number. Okay. Yeah, but you 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 start because I did it last time. Okay. Oh, so you remember? Out oh. one, one out of uh, forty five baby paltrows. Do you give this? <laughs> Okay, one out of 45 baby paltrows. Okay, yeah. so I am going to give it... Let's see, i got to get the... I'm going to give it a 38. Um, baby paltrows? Okay. Uh, the math didn't come out, it didn't come out quite as high. I, <laughs> I, I, I really like this episode. Um, it's probably out of the five that we've done for this podcast... It's probably the best one so far. Uh, really? Wow. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. For me, huh. it blew the 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 fucking pants off of uh, George Went. Uh, <laughs> not that I want to <laughs> see that. It was better than uh, 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 what's her name with the microscope. Better than that stupid painting one. And uh, 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 but just not you know it just barely beat out the the conspirators with the Irishman. But. Uh, I, I it, like that one. It, it it's almost almost a perfect episode. Um, the only thing that stops it from being perfect is the bullshit twenty minutes or so that could have been trimmed off. I mean, if we if we could have these two actors, Peter Falk and John Cassavetes, you know, after the murder is committed, if they're just talking in a room the whole time about the murder, that could carry the rest of the episode off on its own. They did it with William Shatner. In the first one that Shatner was in, in the 70s, mm-hmm. uh, Fade into Murder, it, that's literally nothing but Shatner and Falk talking. But, um, and the both of them are superb actors in this, and I, it, it's almost as if there's not a script, you know? Um, it's, it's really well done. Um, the clues are really, really tight. Um, mm-hmm. Could he have typed the note on the, at the scene of the crime instead of bringing it with him? Yeah, that's a small point. That's a stupid little niggle. Um, I, I, but overall, it's a really, really good episode that's not really that tight because it's got some loose fat hanging off of it. And that's that's my score. Okay. Very good. So what was the final 30, 36? Yes, that's what correct. That's correct. Okay, I'm going to actually score pretty close to that. I'm going to give it 35 and a half baby paltrows. Really? Uh, yeah. Really? Um, I thought, yeah, I agree with you pretty much. I think we agree on this episode generally. Mm-hmm. Um uh, I I think one of the the best parts, one of my favorite parts, was that what I think was unscripted scene between Columbo and the sergeant talking about the deceased, the murderer, the the, the murderer, not the murderer, the, the the one who died, Jennifer Wells. Jennifer Wells. I really like that. I don't know why. I just it seemed it seemed real to me. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, some things I didn't like. I think we both agree with was the the padding. Um, it was very evident. I think it was uh, aware. You you mentioned earlier that they were trying to increase the the runtime, and I think that some of these scenes, like with the jazz bar, I just upon, upon watching it a second time, I, I I had no interest. I kind of zoned out mm-hmm. and started researching composers and mm-hmm. sexual fornications <laughs> um, at that point for this podcast. But, uh, you know, those kind of things. But overall, I mean, I, I really enjoyed it. I thought it was a great, great first episode uh, for a regular series at this point. Because before it was TV movies, right? Uh, well, no. There were two TV movies. 
Then they had a first season, and so this is the first episode of the second season. Oh, I thought okay. Because if huh. you if you buy them in the DVD packets, well, I I bought them in the okay, individual. So this is confused. this is season two. Yeah. Okay. And then you throw in dogs first episode. Mm-hmm. I really I really like this. It's a good episode. I thought uh, the the murder Alex was really good. You know, it was conniving, uh, believable. Columbo, you know, I I really enjoyed the scenes where he was. One more question, sir. One more mm-hmm. question. I'm sorry. I'll never. I won't bother you again. Of course, he, and then shows up five minutes later. You know, mm-hmm. asks more questions. I really liked it. I thought it was a good episode mm-hmm. overall. Excellent. So, do you think? Do you agree with me that it was the best one that we've reviewed out of the five so far? I, you know, um, it's possible. I know it's not the best one I've seen. Okay. Out of out of what I've been watching. Okay. So, yeah, but it's, it's. I would rank it highly. Yes. It is definitely not my favorite. But, um, hmm. All right. Uh, before we, uh, I have you spin the, uh, the wig and wheel of the 90s for our next episode, I must say, uh, this is the conclusion of Series 1 of the Colombo Confad podcast. So we're going to take a few weeks off. I don't know if it's going to be like a month or two months, but you've had five continuous weeks of podcasts mm-hmm. from us. Uh, so we've got to watch... Five more episodes. Well, actually, we're not going to watch the five episodes, but we're we're going to go on with our with our lives, and uh, well, uh, we got another podcast. Yeah, something to do with a British program. Yeah, we're going, we need to do so. that. There's going to be a big announcement in a couple of days about that, and I don't know, whatever. I guess we got to do something with that because there's a couple of people that listen to it that might be disappointed. But um, so, uh, but please uh, feel free to email us. We will be monitoring email. We probably will not be responding to email, uh, but we'll we'll probably read it on the air, on the air. Like this is a radio show. Um, and if you want, if you want Sean to do it in his Colombo voice, that we can do that. N- no, please don't do that. <laughs> but uh, but you can, like I said, Twitter at Colombo Confab, and there's also a Facebook page. Uh, so and there's nothing on the Facebook page or the Twitter feed at this moment. Uh, because it was created literally like two hours ago. So as we record this, um, or in this time, it would be like a month ago, or more than a month ago. So, all right. So, uh, uh, Steve, why don't you give the Wigan Wheel the '90s a spin, and we'll tell the good listeners what we'll be talking about in a few weeks' time. All right. Here we go. All right. Let's see what this. Is. All right, it's going to be Murder, Smoke, and Shadows, starring Fisher Stevens as a Steven Spielberg-inspired movie director. Murder, Smoke. Oh, that sounds actually really fascinating. We'll see. Wow. So, okay, so until next time, folks, please relax, watch Columbo, and uh, say goodbye to the nice folks, Steve. Good night to the nice folks, Steve. Goodbye!